So obviously a lot of the focus on the offense and how you guys can get it going. Kind of what do you see from your perspective as what you guys kind of need in these last four games? To... Yeah, well, um, answer your question minus the last four games part. Um, we are just super excited, honestly, for this. You know, the whole message is these are one game seasons now moving forward. And it's easy to get caught up in you know, our deficiencies, like, yeah, we have to fix certain things, but our full attention is on the excitement, the opportunity that we have to, uh, to to beat West Virginia. And you could feel the energy today at practice. Guys are really locked in. I thought it was a really clean, clean practice, a lot of execution. And so, uh, it, you know, off of a loss, I really do love the energy uh, that the guys brought today. It's like you got the depth to, you know, obviously one game season, but you feel like you got the necessary depth to navigate this stretch. and still be in a position to execute at a high level. Yeah, absolutely. I do think we have the depth. I mean, it's it's we know, I don't know if there's a team out there, you know, eight, nine, eight, nine weeks into the season that um, don't have issues with depth. And, and um, you know, that's our job as coaches is to get the next guys ready in the event. So whatever injuries they're happening right now, um, but I really do, and I know I speak for the other coaches, we feel good about our depth and we, we love our chances to go in and give West Virginia the best we have. West Virginia on defense, do they are they similar to anyone in this conference? I know this league does a lot of 3-3-5 you know, three, three, looks, but what does West Virginia kind of do? Are they similar to anyone? Yeah, yeah, they're similar to a lot of the, uh, the even uh, odd front teams that we've played. Um, they, they mix in their front a little bit and what they do coverage-wise, a lot of cover four, cover three. Um, they play tough, they play hard, they play physical. So they, they're, they're a lot like, they're more like a lot of the defenses we've played. Uh, than not, and there's some differences in personnel here and there. But man, they, they're they're a good team, and you can tell as you watch film that they the brand they take pride in the brand of football that that they that they have. Um, and so we'll have our we'll have a good test, but we're like I said, we're super excited for the opportunity. A Rod said on Coordinator's Corner that the Big 12 officials maybe call the pass interference and allow a little more physicality. Have you noticed that, and has that affected your receivers? Yeah, I've noticed it. Um, I can say it's affected it, but I, what, one thing, um, you know, instead of giving guys opportunities to uh, find excuses, like I, I love preaching the message that it's just going to require us to be stronger route runners. You know, I brought up the other day in meetings, um, Keelan on a, on kind of a an in and out route that we have on a corner that he caught. Um, he was getting draped pretty good, um, and I told him there there are guys all over college football and the NFL who who maybe wouldn't be able to get out of that and would complain for a flag, but he was a perfect example of playing physical and strong in the way you run a route. There's a ton of receivers out there who are fluid, who are fast, who are nifty, but when hands get on them, it's it's done. And um, I think the great receivers, I mean, I think a, look no further than Puka, like he was hard to um, to hold and latch onto. And so, yes, I've, I've noticed that some refs are a little more forgiving than others on that, but message to my room is, is who cares you can't leave it in the hands of the ref play strong and get open sometimes when the chips are down it can be hard for guys to not try and do too much and we talk about that on defense but it can be true on offense yeah. as well chase was saying you know one of your messages is hey be prepared you know get put in the preparation to be ready to be confident yeah how do you do that as a coach to try and make sure that they're focused to the right level not trying to do too much yeah. but not you know losing focus and not doing too little because there's a balance exactly right there yeah i mean i think anytime you can bring up reference points and something that these guys can relate to a little bit um outside of the game i think the more that message can can resonate and so it's i think it's a matter of posing questions to them in their lives when when things you know where they felt a little anxious you know what what were the steps you took to get over that and not overdo things and and um you know as they have dialogue and think about those things and now you just frame that into the football sense and say kid it's no different. Like sometimes the, the 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 entertainment, the energy of college football, social media, everything can create just it just compounds um, that anxiety and, and trying to overdo things. And so that's part of our job as coaches is framing a message that way. And I think they've done a great job with that. I, I don't sense any kind of panic or um, you know or angst over this. They, they're all super excited and have the right type of energy. Do you see an opportunity for any of these young players like a JoJo Phillips to maybe earn some playing time in this final month of the season maybe? Yeah, for sure. He's got, a, he's got three games left. Um, he's done a great job every week. He continually comes along. And so, um, you know, for sure, if the opportunity prevent, pre, uh, presents itself, I would, I would love to see JoJo out there and, and making plays and, and getting some use of of uh, the games that he is able to play. Has uh, Keanu got a chance to play uh, and make the trip to West Virginia? Uh, with that we will find out. It's a day-to-day -day deal with him. So they worked him out today. He's looking good. Um, 
Usually by Wednesday, Thursday, they give us kind of the final go, but today I do not know that. Is his injury a, a stem from the setback he had in fall camp? Um, no, camp no, no. Injury? Yeah, it happened uh, before the, the, the TCU game. So, Kind of on the same token of, of, of depth and injuries and that kind of thing. Have you noticed, it's obviously not totally new anymore, but have you noticed that four-game redshirt policy, new rule, kind of help down the stretch in terms of depth and being able to fill guys in a little bit better and, and that sort of thing? Because I think that was sort of the intent yeah. of the rule change, yeah. right, was to be able to boost that. They, Has that helped you guys? Absolutely, yeah. And I'm, I'm not sure what the intent one is. And if it was, that's 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 awesome. But to Mitch's point, like, that's one of the reasons we feel good about our depth um, is because we're able to – bring these guys along who are able to play four games without losing their year and they had now have with fall camp included I mean 11 12 weeks of you know being in the system and so uh, I'm sure you know BYU fans will see a lot of you know a good mix of, of these uh, red shirt candidates who we're going to need as depth late into the season when, when you were with Jay Hill up at Weaver did he dress up <laughs> yeah, this is you know what this is new to me. I was shocked when I saw that. I was like, who is this clown out here? And I was like, wait, that's Austin Powers. But uh, I do remember he was very, I think he gets that from his wife. Sarah's awesome. She was always, you know, coming to, to, to just taking all the holidays. I mean, I remember on April Fool's, she brought in donuts and I was the first one to eat it. And it was just filled with horseradish and I almost threw up. So they're, they're uh, pranksters. They love holidays. I love it. They, they bring a lot of uh, energy. Jay, I do remember Jay dressing up for certain events, but I don't remember practicing in his Halloween costume. I think it was awesome. It was a good mix up. Does it help keep things light during tough circumstances yeah. after a loss? Yeah, for sure. It, it definitely helps. helps uh, whether, even whether we won or lost, it's just that energy is good, you know. And our guys are up, man. Like we're we're good. We're we're uh, you know. There's no no somber dark feelings here. Uh, but the, the the costume was definitely a good burst of energy. So your wife's never pulled you into a couple. No, of <laughs> no. She knows she knows I hate Halloween and there's some compromise zero compromising <laughs> stuff and Halloween's one of them. But I am gonna go see my kids, you know, later on tonight and watch them have fun with it and I'm a good sport I put the smile on even though inside I'm like I just want to go home and drink hot chocolate and watch TV so. all right appreciate you guys yeah exactly <laughs> thanks Bessie.